Let me ask you something. Would you bomb down a trail going Mach 10 if you didn't have any confidence in your brakes? Me neither. That's why today I'm gonna to be doing everything that I can to upgrade the brakes on this bike without changing the brakes themselves. Budget conscious upgrades is the treatment I'm giving this bike and I have to stay under $1,000. So far I got a baseline test to see how this thing rides in its stock form and if it can keep up with my 2023 Polygon Colossus N9 dream build. So far all I've done is change the wheels and tires, went tubeless, and added a cush core trail in the back. All in, I'm up to $328 in upgrades. And I still have the brakes, drivetrain, all the contact points, and the suspension to take care of. This is gonna be tight. If you missed any of the previous episodes, they'll be linked in the description below. I just love locking up the rear wheel just before a turn and then railing those berms. The brakes on the N9 are TRP DHR Evos. They're the best brakes I've ever had. They have 203 mil rotors front and back that are 2.3 millimeters wide. And I also have some absolute black graphen pads. These are always cool to give me a consistent bite. These are the best feeling brakes I've ever had, but they're $279 a set. Add 75 bucks for each rotor and 50 bucks a pair for the graphen pads. That's over $800 for this brake setup. That's almost my whole budget I have for all the upgrades I wanna do to this bike. The main issue I have with these brakes is that they just don't lock up. They're properly bed in, they're definitely not contaminated, but they just don't grab like I like them to. So how do you improve the bite on hydraulic brakes? My first go-to would probably be bigger rotors, but the Colossus N7 already comes with 200 mil rotors front and back. So what's next? The pads. The stock pads on these Tektro brakes are resin compound. These are great all round pads with smooth actuation and they're quiet, but they just lack that bite power. That's why I got these metal compound pads. They're a bit louder and squeakier when they get wet, but they have a much more reliable bite point as it's metal on metal. The bite is also so much more powerful. Oh, and they last longer, so win-win. While I'm at it, I'm also gonna give this bike another simple and inexpensive upgrade. I'm gonna take out this two piston caliper and swap it out with a four piston one. This should double the force pushing the pads onto the disc and the pads are also wider, so more surface area biting onto the rotor. Swapping out the caliper was a piece of cake. All I had to do was disconnect the old one and the new one just slid right in. The only tricky part is when you disconnect the hydraulic line, you introduce a little bit of air in the system. So a full brake bleed is necessary to get rid of all the air bubbles. I was really on the fence about this one and this was not in the original plan, but some of you guys recommended in the comments that I should swap out to Shimano levers. I absolutely love the feel of Shimano brakes because of their short levers and their one finger braking power. I was lucky enough to find these on the buy and sell for a hundred bucks. They're a brand new takeoff from a dude who just loves SRAM brakes. For some reason unknown. Now I know that both Shimano and Tektro both use mineral oil in their system, but I didn't know if the connection from the hose into the lever would be the same. Lucky for me, it's slotted right in and it's not leaking. So what do you guys think of my Frankenstein brakes? What should we call them? Shemectro? Tecmano? Yeah, Tecmano's got a good ring to it. Now that the new pads are installed, I gotta bed them in before I hit the trails. To properly bed in my brake pads, I find a little hill I can go up and down over and over again. I get up to speed and I apply the front brake at about 75% force without coming to a complete stop. I do this about five to six times and every time it feels like it grabs more and more and more. As soon as I can lock up the front and the rear brake, it's time to ride. Just kidding. Changing the brakes and pads is gonna have zero effect on this climb, so I'm not gonna make you suffer through that. Let's skip to the top. So last week's run was three minutes and 27 seconds. Let's see if I can beat it today now that I've got confidence in these brakes. And go. better.
brakes hook up way better. in my eyes. <laughs> Whoa. The brakes feel so much better. Whoop. Three minutes, 12 seconds. That's 15 seconds faster than last week. The brakes felt so much better. I could finally just lock them up and I had so much more confidence in going faster into the turns. But I think I still have some work to do if I wanna catch up to the PR I set with my N9. All right, back to the shop. And since I didn't do anything to improve the climb time today, let's focus on that in the next episode. Next, I'll be upgrading everything on this rig to make it pedal easier and more efficiently. And no, I am not putting a motor or battery on it. Although, that would be pretty cool. I mean, I'd obliterate my budget, but... Focus, Ben! <laughs>